and I am here today with part three of my summer book haul. The third and final part of my summer book haul which as you can tell from the title has become very okay. It's all crime corner. It's all crimey, wimey goodness. I am terribly terribly sorry. It is who I am as a person. If there are are not dead bodies in my books these days. I am kind of disappointed. The first half of this video is all going to be fiction and then the second half is all going to be true crime. So hold on to your hats. Also, there are a lot of books here. So I will apologise in advance for talking at you at 1.75 Scottish speed. The first book that I have here to show you is kind of a controversial choice for me because it is Sherry Lapina and this is my third and final try with Sherry Lapina's books. A couple of years ago she wrote The Couple Next Door which Booktube really liked but I just kind of found uninspiring and convoluted and then she wrote A Stranger Next Door or The Stranger Next Door, I'm not sure which, and I didn't get along with it at all, I DNF'd it. But I always really love the premise of her novels and I always see them and think, oh, I wish I liked them. So this one has an amazing premise and it is my last try. If I don't like this one, I will not pick up her future books. This one is about a woman, I'm not sure whether she goes alone or whether she goes with her husband, I am getting conflicting reports, but she goes to a holiday cabin in the middle of nowhere. It's a lodge, it's trees and mountains and a lot of nothing and they get snowstormed in and then somebody shows up dead and somebody else shows up dead and then it's very clear that guests are being picked off and she has to turn amateur sleuth and try and find out why this is happening. I really love two things about this premise. First, that it's kind of a locked door mystery. They cannot go anywhere. And second, that the main character has to start investigating herself when she is not a detective or a reporter or, you know, any of the other 100 normal tropes in crime novels. So I have high hopes for this one, but I will report back and let you know what I think. The next one that I have is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Now, this is the second book by Riley Sager. Final Girls is on my TBR for this month and I am very, very freaking excited about it. And I usually don't buy second books by authors who I haven't tried, but <laughs> when I heard the premise of this one, I, 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 I couldn't help myself because this is a Leanne book. This is totally a Leanne book. This one is about Emma, who when she was a little girl went to Camp Nightingale very much the a sort of Girl Scouts learning to live in the wilderness, kumbaya by the fire type camp. And she and a group of her little friends there played two truths and a lie. And then one night they were playing and the last Emma saw of them was when all of them snuck out of the cabin in the dead of night and ended the moment by doing shh. And then they disappeared. Poof. Now Emma is an artist and she turns all of her nightmares about this experience into art and she is invited to go back to Camp Nightingale when it reopens but she very swiftly discovers that not everything is right about the camp. I am so excited! I am really hoping that this book is for Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu promised to be but just didn't hit the mark. <laughs> the next book that I have is The Beautiful Dead by Belinda Bohr. Now I read Snap by Belinda Bohr last month and I enjoyed it. There was a lot to say about it that was good. The characters were great. The interactions between them were great. I loved the dialogue. I loved being inside the characters' heads and feeling their feelings with them but the plot was really disjointed and there were far too many coincidences and some things just didn't add up. It, it seemed like the book didn't really know what it wanted to be. That being said, I really liked it and I was compelled to keep picking it up even though I was just kind of like eh about the plot and so I have decided that I am going to give Belinda Bohr another go because it turns out she has a pretty big backlist and Beautiful Dead was her release 
before Snap and everybody who I've spoken to seems to really love it. So Beautiful Dead is about Eve Singer who is a crime reporter. She is someone who feels like she needs death in her life but her career is flagging and she doesn't know what to do to kickstart it. Then a murderer turns up who wants to show the public how beautiful it is to die and starts putting on very gory public murder scenes. He contacts Eve and he essentially promises to give her the scoop on every new scene. Eve of course thinks that she's hit the jackpot but she doesn't realise that while the killer is obsessed with very public murder he's also kind of obsessed with Eve. I'm hoping that this one kind of walks a line between sort of serial killer crime and stalkery crime. The next one that I have to show you is one that I am super excited about and it is Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone. This one is a bit complicated to explain so I will give it my best shot. Essentially Jane works at a Midwestern insurance firm. She is very bottom of the pecking order and she blends in pretty well. She makes sure she looks like everybody else and acts like everybody else. She in fact turns herself into just the kind of woman that Stephen who is a middle manager there really likes. She's meek, she's quiet and she keeps her mouth shut. And so Jane ends up being Stephen's mistress. She allows him to seduce her, she allows herself to become insinuated into his everyday life and his family life. But it turns out Jane is hiding something because uh, she knows Stephen and Stephen doesn't know her. Stephen also doesn't know what he did to her several years ago and uh, she is going to wait for just the right time to tell him about it. <coughs> the last fiction one that I have to show you is a bit of an odd one and amongst all of these other books because it is very definitely a cosy mystery and it is Murder with Peacocks which is the first Meg Langslow book by Donna Andrews. There are like 24 of these books. They are set in Virginia. There's a lot of down at home southern charm in them and definitely the hypocrisy of southern society. In this one Meg is the bridesmaid for three relatives who all want some very interesting things included in their wedding and they have basically dumped the planning of everything on Meg but while she's putting together guest lists and running about after all of these crazy relatives of hers there is a newcomer to this small southern community and she is not very nice. She is rubbing everybody up the wrong way, she is definitely dropping bombs about lots of different people's pasts and hinting at skeletons in people's closets and then one day she is mysteriously found dead. I wonder why. Like I say, there's 24 of these but I really would like to get into another cosy mystery series which is not historical. The other two cosy mystery series that I have going on at the moment are the Flavia Deleuze mysteries and of course the Elizabeth Peters books which I feel like I'm perpetually in the middle of reading but of course they are very historical one more so than the other and I wanted something which was a little more contemporary and before before anybody recommends me MC Beaton's books, yes, I do have the first two in this series and I will eventually give them a go but I have heard some kind of not okay things about what MC Beaton does to her characters in later books and I just, I don't know whether I want to be dragged into a series where I invest in the characters and then can't get behind the plots. So maybe you guys can tell me different in the comments. Have you read MC Beaton? And now on to the true crime portion of this video. The first book that I have to show you is The 57 Bus by Dashka Slater and I only heard about this book last week but as soon as I read the premise for it I clicked and bought it immediately and I'm just going to read you exactly what it says on the synopsis on the back because it was what sold me. One teenager in a skirt 
one teenager with a lighter, one moment that changes both of their lives forever. If it weren't for the 57 bus, Richard and Sasha would never have met. Although they live in the same city, they are from radically different worlds. But one single reckless act changes both of their lives forever. What happens next is a story of race and discrimination, but also of recovery, reconciliation and hope. It's about the good and the bad in all of us and how your whole life can change in the time that it takes to flick a cigarette lighter. And remarkably, it's all true. The discrimination in this one is not all racial. It is also gender biased because I believe that Sasha's gender has a question mark over it at the beginning of this book. So I am looking very much forward to it, but I am also braced for the fact that it is probably going to be utterly horrifying. The next one that I have here is Bloodstain by Peter Laylor and this is actually a book that I have already read. I read this a very long time ago. This came out in the very early 2000s and I think I was about 16 or 17 when I picked this book up and it was definitely it was definitely a gateway to true crime and to thrillers and other things for me because it is about Catherine Knight. So if you don't know anything about Catherine Knight, she is a very, very famous murderess from Australia and she essentially killed her lover and skinned him and cooked him for his family. Peter Laylor was actually a newspaper reporter at the time and he covered this story for one of the top dailies in Australia and he became absolutely obsessed with finding out the truth about the motive behind Catherine Knight's horrific crime. I remember being absolutely sucked into this one at the time. I don't know what I'll think of it now but I want to give it another try. The next one that I have is To the Bridge by Nancy Rommelman. Now Nancy is also another journalist and she covered this case when it became very famous. So in 2009 Amanda Stott Smith drove to a very high bridge in Portland, Oregon and dropped her two small children off the site. Her son died but her, I think she was seven year old daughter survived and after this of course there was public outcry and people were out for blood and Amanda was taken into custody, charged, convicted and is now serving 30 odd years in an American prison for what she did. Nancy decided that she wanted to try and think of Amanda objectively so rather than working from the crime backwards she decided to work from Amanda's very early childhood through to the crime and she uncovered thousands and thousands of pages of withheld documents that never made the courts and never made the newspapers about what Amanda had gone through prior to making this horrific decision. So I am very excited for this one. The next one that I have is Dead Girls by Alice Bolin. This one is an essay collection about America's obsession with missing dead and abused girls. This looks at everything so it, it isn't just looking at the crime and thriller genres it's also looking at modern media and things like the obsession with Britney Spears and her spiralling down the drain at one point in her life and it also looks at folklore which I'm not so into but I guess if we're tracing the thing through and it's only a chapter or one essay I can put up with it because again I'm just not a folklore or fairy tale person it's not my thing but it promises James Baldwin and Joan Didion and Twin Peaks and lots of other things that hit a lot of Leanne buttons so I am hoping to enjoy it. It's been quite controversial since it came out it has definitely kicked up a lot of different opinions so I am eager to see where I fall on that spectrum. And shockingly, I was that into my groove of telling you about all of the books that I want to read that I didn't realise that was the last one on my list. So that is everything for my summer book haul, which, which was a lot of books. It was a lot of books, guys. I didn't count, but I think we were in like the 20 odd range. I am now off to give my throat a rest and to put away all of the books that I have just showed you. <laughs>
So as always, please tell me if you have read any of the books on my list or if you have any recommendations for crimey, thrillery things or true crime, I would love to hear them. Let's chat in the comments below and I shall speak to you later. Bye!